doesn't want you to be dominated by your circumstances. God doesn't want your circumstances to have dominion. He's made you to have dominion. He's made you to have dominion, brothers and sisters. Let's wake up and take what is rightfully ours. Oh, I get so excited. I notice on my monitor that I need to just adjust the uh, volume down because I feel like a trumpet today. I want to shout to the Lord. I want to shout and say, get this book, get this book so that you can equip yourself. Hallelujah. Now, let's get past the book. Jesus Christ came to this earth. And the reason Jesus Christ came It's because people's minds were in bondage to legalistic rules, church rules, rules of tradition, rules of conformity, rules of a familiar spirit being churchy. I'm not knocking the church, no. But you, by the time you hear the end of these teachings, you will understand that church is not the real church. The real church is the kingdom of God. How do you know that, preacher? Matthew 16, Jesus said, after Peter had this mighty revelation, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood, did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven revealed this to you. Hallelujah. He says, now upon this rock, the rock of revelation, the rock of insight, the rock of prophetic anointing, the rock of apostolic anointing, that is the foundation of the church. If we get away from those, we you will just have a traditional church. And Jesus said, now I give you the keys of the kingdom. The keys, the keys, the keys, the keys, the keys, the keys, the keys. keys. To build my church, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever you bind, declare unlawful. Whatever you loose, releasing it, making a decree. This is lawful. It shall be done. It shall be done because it must be the same way it's done in heaven. And Jesus is seated in heaven, finished his work, finished his work, praying for us, for y'all and me, looking down. God is looking for a man and a woman that will dare to step into his kingdom realm. He says, now I give you the keys of the kingdom. So it's through the keys of the kingdom, beloved, that we build the church. The the real church is kingdom. If we can get the kingdom into our church, that will be the real church of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you experience the kingdom, you will never ever be able to live off little children's milk and, uh, you know, just live off milk. You want the steak. The meat. The kingdom is the real thing. The church must allow God's kingdom to come into church life. And then we can have a kingdom, glory, revival, hallelujah. Now, let me just look there on my monitor. I want to just bring the picture up here for you. Okay. Now, I want you to look very closely at that picture. That is Moses' tabernacle. Can you see the little building? That's where the holy place is. That's where the table of showbread is. That's where you get filled in with the Holy Ghost. Oh, don't reject the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, you remain in the outer court. Can you see the outer court? That's where they slaughter an animal, which is a type of Jesus Christ having sacrificed his life. A lot of noise in the outer court. But they are preparing themselves through the first things to get into that holy place. Now you see that little building with the two kind of orange, yellowish stripes? The first stripe, that is your very 
uh, holy place, your inner court. And then you go beyond that where that uh, white cloud is above it. And the second stripe, you can see that that's your holy of holies, that the most holy place. That's where God is seated. So God does not want you and I to be stuck in the outer court. Beloved, there's much more. There's much more. Oh, don't say I'm a Methodist. I'm a charismatic. I'm a Presbyterian. I'm a what? Assembly of God, I'm a Baptist, the first, second, I'm just, man, I'm just, I'm just stuck with my church. That's the problem. That's the problem. We need the revelation of His kingdom. It was for freedom that Christ has set you free. I ask people, I said, tell me, how many of you, let me just take a sip, uh, how many of you can tell me today what the kingdom of God is about? Do you know anything? Well, the kingdom, well, they go. Not sure, but the kingdom, that's God. Beloved, that is God through Jesus Christ. But do you know the different three anointings in the kingdom. Do you know how to activate those anointings? In my book, I ask questions here. Let me just page there. In my book, I ask some questions. And that's what we're going to deal with. It's, uh, I put here, how do I release the kingdom of God on a daily basis? I ask the question, how can I relate to the kingdom? How do I benefit in putting the kingdom of God first? What does it mean that I have to seek the kingdom of God first? And how do I put the kingdom of God in every decision? How do I walk with the kingdom mentality? Why is the kingdom of God so important that everyone seems to talk about it right now? And then, to, to topple it, Jesus himself said in Luke 17, 20, 21, for the kingdom of God is within you. So, you have the kingdom. Now that, is mind-boggling. You have the kingdom of God within you. The key is, how do you break open the kingdom of God so that the goods of the kingdom can allow you to rule and reign in this life? Jesus, His first message, repent, change your mind. Realign your thoughts with kingdom concepts. Jesus said, seek ye first my kingdom and mine. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you as well. He said, like the birds of the air, he's comparing. He says, look how my father feeds the birds of the air. Oh, these birds of the air. Man, listen, they don't even labor. They don't pray. They, can, they cannot pray in English nor in tongues. They not even were baptized. But yet my heavenly father looks after them. How much more you? I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you right now. How much more you will the Heavenly Father take care of? You are far more important, beloved. You are far more important than the birds of the air. But now Jesus says this. He says, I don't want you to run around like pagans. Do you know what that word pagan means? I don't want you to run around like a religious bunch of people operating out of a familiar spirit of conformity. Pagans. It's a, it's a ritual of a, a bunch of religious uh, uh, people.